A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit in. What about when the old feed off the young in one of the history's largest Ponzi schemes, all at the threat of gunpoint? You can't opt out, but you can remind people of Social Security's true nature with this shirt. From InvisibleHandFashion.com. Winning! Use the promo code SPACEGHOST, 10% off your first order. A link is in the description, right around the testicular area. You're gay. Hello everybody, Terrence Bob here, Redonculus.com. <laughs> A good pop showed up, and I had some good news for the ladies. No matter how ugly you are, no matter how reprehensible your attitude, there is enough alcohol out there to get you laid. As a dude, and I'm kind of ashamed to admit this, but a lot of us were just a six pack and some imagination away from hitting just about anything. You can be a tragic burn victim midget with no nose and braces and bad breath. There's enough alcohol out there, and it might be alcohol poisoning, but something's gonna get put somewhere. And if you don't believe me, you clearly have not been watching enough daytime TV, I'm just saying. That is not a prescription. I do not want you to watch daytime TV because that shit will rot your brain. But when you go around banging women that look like this, something's gonna rot clean off and it's nowhere good. But hey, women that look like this, they get banged all the time. And I bet you're like, how does that happen? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you. You might as well pour yourself the menagerie of alcohol and start drinking because somebody's gonna get fucked tonight and it might just be you. Yeah. All right, on the board behind me, disregard the penis in the bottom corner, I have a scale here. At the top is the look factor. It goes one through 10. There are very few tens and there are very few ones but people get the one real quick with additional adjusters. And how do we adjust for those adjusters? Alcohol, and there's the sliding scale on this side. What about the penis? Before we get into it, this is nothing that starts a relationship. You are purely at the bar for the crash up derby. You know what I mean? What we have here are first dates, blind dates, hit it and quit it, or bails, which means bang it and immediately leave situations. Man, that's just mean. That's mean, man. Listen, ladies, don't get mad at me. <laughs> you are at the bar and everyone knows the deal. You threw your hat in the ring and you are there for the sperm safari, just saying. That is a meat market and you are on the slab and you willingly did it to yourself. So, you notice this girl at the bar. She's a six, dolled up to a seven. You walk up to her. What do we do? Ooh, ooh. She smiles at you. Oh, you realize jacked up grill. You were a seven. Now you drop down to a six, which requires me to drink one to bring you back up to a seven. You see how this works. We're going to go through the adjusters. And please, if I missed any, comments below. This one is almost a deal breaker, if not a deal breaker. That's a stinky pussy. You're going to have to do a recon if you're smart. Little finger test. Swab the area if you know what I mean, but don't get caught smelling it. Because that is a classic mistake. And if you haven't seen that episode yet, check it out. Now listen, ladies, I know what you're saying. That's reprehensible. That's just a natural part of a woman's body. Yeah, well, my face ain't going there if it doesn't pass the litmus test. Sorry. If you uncross your legs and it smells like dead meat and plants are shriveling in the corner and the flies are coming in, that is a problem. I have no idea how you can drink this back to normal because we've all been there. You undo the button, you crack the seal, and then there's that awkward silence as it wafts into your face. It's got the smell of, I don't know, rotten tuna in a baby's diaper that was sealed in a coffee can for a year, and you're the sucker who popped the top. Oh, God! In my book, that's a walk off the lap, but a lot of guys out there who suffer from lop, which is lack of pussy, that's five drinks just to bring it back up to par. Gentlemen, please, if you are five drinks into this, please weigh this out. Because one, it's going to make you gag even harder. And two, you're too drunk to drive away. <laughs> Holy 
Holy shit, that really was a short drive. Uh. Speaking of stinky orifices, this is a deal breaker for me. Bad breath, because you really can't get away from it. You've all been there, you're at the bar, and she opens her mouth and it's dragging breath, and you're like, oh god, oh god, no. I'm backed up against the wall. Yeah, thank you. No, I'm good, thanks, no. Oh god, no. Three beers, I gotta power through this. Now this is only a three because there are some compensating factors, but they're not always effective. You know, you drive her to her place, she invites you up. Make sure you hand her that piece of gum on the way up. That is not a cure, not by any stretch of the imagination. It simply takes the sting out of the impact, if you know what I mean. You know, you're going at it, the gum wears off, and you're like, oh my god. Option two, flip her over and keep going. Chances are, that's only gonna work for a little while. She's gonna want to make out with you so she doesn't feel cheap. At that point, you're already three drinks and balls deep into the whole situation, so you might as well just ride it into the finish line. What happens when Uncle Nick goes back to college? He pretty much rips his liberal professors and feminist classmates a new one via the essays he hands in on various academic topics. The kind of shit you can't get away with today in the gynocentric cauldron. Purchase Burning the Midnight on Amazon.com today. A link is in the description. This odor doesn't even require a litmus test or even talking to her. It's just around her, and it is that sour smell of B.O. Oh! This by itself is another three drinker, but it's usually attached to the other two bad odor things. And to compensate for all that, you're flirting with alcohol poisoning, bro. That is 11 drinks. I drink a lot on this show, but even that is too much for me. There's uh, flirting with chicks, there's bagging chicks, and then there's the early grave. Take your pick. Let's just say in this case, she smells fine. In fact, she smells like vanilla and flowers. Winning! So in order to get her back to her place, your place, the car, the bathroom, or even the dumpster, <laughs> you still have to chat her up. You have to talk to her so she feels like you're interested, even though you just want to get laid. Once the conversation starts, it will not take long to figure out if she's one of these three things. A motor mouth, a complainer, or a know-it-all. All of those things, they're just a one drinker. Because this is a hit it and quit it situation, there's not really a lot of talking if you know what I mean. So unless you want to find out how she likes her eggs, hopefully unfertilized, you can deal with this. And while you're talking to her, that's a great time to take other aspects in of her appearance. Say she has braces. That's a negative one because let's face it, they scratch, especially if she has horse teeth. Ah, ah that brings back the memories. Why would you let me go down on you anymore? Because it feels like my fish is getting scaled, if you know what I mean. Because if I let you keep it up or do it again, it's gonna feel like it's been gutted, cooked, and eaten, and I don't need that. Huh? One fish in this relationship is one fish too many, screen five. You know, the braces, you know, they're attached to your teeth, which are attached to her face, you know, the oval above her shoulders. You should have noticed that by now. We all fell victim to this. You're in the bar, you look at the woman from behind, she's a solid nine, and you're like, I have to talk to this one. You walk around, you buy her a beer, you give it to her, and you look from the ground up, and she's a solid eight all the way up to her neck, and then it's a three. That's only two beers. I can work with this. There's a word for this gentleman. Go ahead and say it with me. Butterface. There you go. And that means the lights go off before her pants come off. Just saying. You know those movies where the chick is getting plowed and the guy's face is in her shoulder? Butterface. He's not doing that out of passion. He's just doing it out of necessity. He doesn't want to look at you. Because the second he looks up, those hydraulics, ew, if you know what I mean. All the vitamin V in the world can't compensate for all those ugly faces I've seen through the years. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, they did. Either you got yourself an 18-year-old boyfriend or an 80-year-old with some little blue pills. Myron thought he'd just try them out. Lucky you. Now listen, gentlemen, you've probably seen this once in your life because it's quite rare. But you know that oval above the shoulders that is her face? And sometimes it's, it's not an oval. I, I have to explain it. Give me a second here. Imagine a cube with a face on it, and then someone tried to beat it down into an oval, and then they just gave up. And what you wind up with is a head that's a real odd shape, or just too big, 
and I call it disproportionate head size-itis, or the contemporary name bobblehead syndrome. I know you're thinking it's not a big deal, but just you wait until it happens to you. You won't be able to wrap your head around it if you know what I mean. But hey, if it's just a bail situation, just one drink, as long as the rest is fine. My God, that's a big head. <laughs> it didn't look this big in the office. Maybe it's the lighting. My head must look like a golf ball at work. And as long as we're talking about size, you know where this is going, gentlemen, so brace yourself. Wait. Anything from just a little chubby to the Sherman tank option. Chubby? Listen, that's not even a speed bump. There's a lot of guys who love that and they go out of their way to chase it. There is a lot to be said about a woman who's a little overweight with an oral fixation because you come back to the barracks on Monday with the lasagna, just saying. And no, I'm not sharing that lasagna. Fuck you. And it's not like that's ever happened to me before or anything. But you have those guys out there who have their minds fixated on the skinny athletic chick. And that is why that is the benchmark. That is zero. And next we go to Chubby, which is a one drinker. And every 50 pounds over Chubby, you add one more drink. 50 pounds sounds like a lot of weight. And you would be correct. But we are in the Western world now where most of the women are overweight. I know that sucks, but that is the reality on the ground. And as men, we just got used to it. If you were in Asia, or some parts of Europe, or South America, ooh, then it would be one drink per 20 pounds. And those ladies, they take care of themselves. They don't eat Twinkie cereal in the morning. I know, you look at a picture of the Brazilian volleyball team, and you're like, oh, they don't all look like that. You're right, they all don't, but most of them do. And that is why South America is my favorite. <laughs> Yummy. With all of that being said, there is some flexibility to the weight scale. Because an extra 50 pounds on, say, a woman who's six foot two from Norway is going to be completely different than the Jewish girl who's five foot one. Just saying. With all that being said, drink hard, drink fast, and remember, pull out at the end. <laughs> ah! Now we're done exploring the horizontal, and we're going to talk about the vertical. Now for some guys out there, this might be a dirty little secret, but we're going to say that one word, midget. Oh, that's right, you prefer the term little people. <laughs> you sure do have a short fuse. <laughs> I'm certainly curious about the logistics. You stand on a table. House. Pretty much he lay flat and spin me. Normally, that's a five drinker, but hey, there are fetishes out there that scare the shit out of me. If there are guys in Thailand who pay hookers to step on their testicles with high heels, there's got to be a market for midgets. I'm going to be a bigot here. I really can't get into that because, you know, the midget face and that requires another drink and now I'm up to six. But they could quite possibly fit into the basket for a basket fuck, just saying. They're very efficient size for that. You know, hey, if you don't know what a basket fuck is, you know, I've seen it myself. You're just gonna have to look it up because it's quite reprehensible. You kind of get that same weird look on your face as someone who got herded into the donkey show and didn't know what was going on until it started. Not that I know anything about that. Is that going in there? And it, oh, it's spinning around. Oh my God, it's like, look away, look away. I'm disgusted and repulsed and and I can't look away. All right, all right, we're done talking about the wretched basket fuck, okay? Now we're gonna talk about some more superficial characteristics, like lopsided tits. It's a one drinker. In the grand scheme of things, it's really not that big of a deal. We've all been there. You go back to her place, clothes start coming off and one is a slinky and the other is a dinky as soon as you see that one titty that's a full cup and a half bigger drooping for the floor you're gonna want to don't do that don't do that how would you feel if you drop your pants and she looks at it and goes <laughs> really <laughs> listen ladies i sympathize you can't help that any more than we can help the size of our penis it just is what it is so it's basically just one more drink and just grin and bear it and get through it. And just hope while you're sucking on the small one, she doesn't take the big one and try to bash your skull in because that just gets awkward. <laughs> <laughs>
The next two don't sound like a big deal, but they can take you to crazy town real quick. That would be a shaved head or a hair color that just does not exist in nature. And no, Smurf Town or Hulk Green does not count as nature. And each one of those is a three drinker and here are the caveats to that. That shaved head might not be voluntary and I have dated a woman in the past who had alopecia and I would do that again in a heartbeat. <laughs> it was basically smooth sailing. If she has alopecia, hey, so what? You may or may not need a drink for that. I didn't. If she doesn't have alopecia and she's just a crazy chick who shaves her head or dyes it some crazy colors, this is where it gets sticky. Those two indicators alone are indicative of a feminist. And you know what that means if you just bail on it, you know, bang it and leave? You could be looking at some false rape allegations and that is fucking expensive in both money and possibly your time. Or you could do like I do, cut away and move on. Or if they look really good and they smell nice, give them a fake name and never go back to that bar. But hey, feminists, they're claiming that's rape too. They claim that anything less than 100% honesty and disclosure is rape. Please explain that to me with your fake hair and your fake eye color contacts and your porcelain teeth and your fake tits, your push-up bras, your fake nails, or the fact that you're not after me for my money. Screen five. I love how you ladies have the gall to say, I want a real man when 85% of you can be purchased at Walmart. Oh! Speaking of that, some of you ladies, you have real expensive tastes, but in reality, that's just gonna cost us one beer because we're gonna give you a fake name anyway. <laughs> But hey, if I was looking for a relationship, I'd be more worried about it. But I'm not. I'm just trying to hit the buzzy. Go ahead, call me a pig. <laughs> At least you're getting an honest answer, huh? And my honesty, you might find that annoying. But it's not as annoying as a woman who won't get off her goddamn phone. For me, this is just a one drinker because I'm only going to hit it and quit it. But some of you out there get really upset and that's a walk off the lot for you. Especially if this is not a meet at the bar situation. If it's a blind date or a first date, gone. Because listen, if she is that disrespectful to you and she doesn't even know you, you just wait a year. Because at that point, you're completely noodle snoozed, your nuts are in her purse and she's leading you around by your penis. Let's say she doesn't have any of this, or let's be realistic, just like two or three things. Not a big deal. And then you go back to her place and it's like making out with the dog. Her tongue's all over your face, it's in your face, it's licking it, it's like a dog drinking water out of a bowl. You're two, three deep into this, just power through it. Or flip her over and power through it if you know what I mean. Some of that stuff is petty. Some of it is kind of serious, but now we're gonna get to the real red alert shit right here. This is automatic walk off the lot shit. That pussy might not stink, but you peel down those panties and you see warts, it is over. If this chick is a law abiding citizen, she is obligated to tell you if she has any kind of VD before we even get to this point. And if she hasn't, first of all, she's not trustworthy. Second of all, she has VD. Walk off the lot, gentlemen. It's not worth it. You know what else is an immediate break contact? I'm not on the pill, but it's okay, it'll be fine. No, it won't, gentlemen. It'll never be fine. Leave. Just leave. Most of the time, if these women are not on the pill, there's a reason. It's so easy to get in the United States that if they're not taking it, there's a reason. If this girl is from 18 to 28, in the back of your mind, there is no goalie in the net, and two of the defensemen are in the penalty box serving majors. It's a five on three situation, open net, anyone can score, even the goalie for the other team. In this instant, assuming does not make an ass out of you or me, it might make you an ass because you leave. Hey, it's better than getting fucked in the ass for 18 years. And what is just as bad is finding out she's never been on the pill, is finding out she never had to be because she's a virgin. If you do not want to put up with the stage five clinger stalker, do not carry this out. Leave, man. Don't do it. Listen, I know the temptation will be like, yeah, I'll be the first one up in there. It's not worth it, gentlemen. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, almost went to jail. She stalked me for a goddamn year 
And when she finally gave up, she started calling the cops and turning my life into a fucking nightmare. Some of that shit she blamed me for, to the police, I wasn't even in the country and I had the orders to prove it. Did anything come of it? No. It was a huge waste of time and the pain in the ass. And if that happened today, I would have been fucked. So we're going to recap the rules here. Rule number one, don't bang a virgin. Rule number two, don't fuck a virgin. Rule number three, do not have sex with a virgin, period. And don't you dare ever have sex with a woman who is married. <laughs> Because that is how you wind up on the surprise two-way rifle range, and you don't have a rifle. Your new name is Target, and that is not where you want to be. You have to get smart about this. Look for the callus right below where the ring should be, or look for the discoloration where the ring was. Or if you go to our house, look and see if there's pictures on the wall. Do the recon, because that saves you from being on that rifle range. Every man, sooner or later, will set his own death trap. Made a video about it, check it out. But the first thing they do is they bait that shit with pride or one of the seven deadly sins. Don't lie to yourself, gentlemen. Don't be one of those guys like, well, she's cheating on her husband. He must have not been treating her well, or he wasn't making her happy, or whatever. Don't do that. That's how fools get shot. Oh, he's just 120 pounds. I can kick his ass. Not when he has a gun. It's called the Great Equalizer for a reason, yeah! Now just below that is basically if she's in a serious relationship. And that is a case-by-case -case basis, because all's fair in love and war, just saying. Now listen, I can be morally flexible on this, because hell, I've done half of these. But you know, I went to college, I know how it works. If I'm dating a chick and she has a friend, and her friend has a boyfriend in another college, I might hit them both, but they just won't know. What can I say? I wasn't a nice guy. Two chicks at the same time. Winning. And that brings us to the last on the list, and I actually fit into this quite nicely. Divorced. In this case, I have divorced as the two drinker. But there's some guys out there that's a walk off the lot, and I don't blame them. As a red pill dude, I know in the back of my mind there was a man who got all of his friends and family together, paid thousands of dollars for a ceremony and rings, and swore in front of God that he would take care of this woman till he died. And something happened that caused him to say, fuck it. Got her in. Oh. <laughs> that is some serious shit. And if you decide to walk off the lot, I understand. With that being said, we're done with alcohol adjusters. And if you look at the scale, if you fuck up, you can wind up drinking a lot of booze to get a little bit of tail. But please, don't drink and swim. Don't drink and fight. Don't go to the ground. Wear a condom. Don't drink and drive. Uber works. Call a cab. But don't share one with a chick because you might get fucking sued. That about covers it. Do we all feel safe? Oh, I forgot. When you wear that condom, take it with you because she can sperm jack your ass. And I know women will claim that never happens. That's disgusting. Bullshit, la-di-da, it happens. In fact, links in the description to the time that happened, eh. And when you check out that link, you'll notice there's more links for Patreon, PayPal, maker support. Send us a couple bucks so we can keep doing this because it's goddamn expensive. But much more than that, your support keeps this channel going and we want to keep doing it. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell don't you dare be a dead fuck. Hit it and quit it. Run away. <laughs> if you go through all this, you say she's a seven, right? She's got bad teeth and she's got a stinky pussy. We're already at six and bad breath. We're at eight. You know, one tits bigger than the other. We're at nine and she has braces. You're at 10. You're at 10 drinks. You're alcohol poisoning. <laughs> That's asking for a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> you can wind up dead real quick and not even realize what happened. <laughs> You'll wake up standing before the man like, hey, you kind of fucked up, bro. <laughs> <laughs>